Hi, Michael Fox here. Today I am visiting the pollinator link garden of Jen Bartlett. Jen's garden is part of the stable Swamp Creek Link at Salisbury in suburban Brisbane and provides water, food and shelter for wild, the wildlife moving through the area. Okay, I love casuarinas. This is the Ala Casuarina littoralis, which means it doesn't grow very big but I've planted a little grove of three of them outside the bedroom window so that about five years when the wind blows I can lie in bed and go I find that sound really relaxing, reminds me of childhood holidays at the beach. Yeah. So that's that. And so it brings the beach back into your yeah. suburban backyard? Yeah, it does. Along with the aeroplanes? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm even fond of the aeroplanes because they've got a routine. Um, so I know what time of the day it is by what, what, how many um, planes fly overhead. But yeah, that's beautiful. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've got my um, native gingers because this this is a um, a 60s house we live in, and there was a fibro off the plan model of a, a U-shaped house, which meant it had an enclosed patio. So when there's a heat wave. Uh, this face is east and in the afternoon it's the coolest room so I've put lots of native gingers so that when you're sitting under the fan you look out and it looks lush and um, you just instantly feel cool. So you're creating areas yeah. that have specific microclimates? Oh definitely, that's the heat wave room. <laughs> <laughs> heat wave recovery. Um, this is a plant that I'm really enjoying, which is a rainforest grevillea, grevillea baleani. And um, the other day I noticed that, most because of the big thick leaves, the, um, these big, big black ants, just agitate them a little bit. Oh, there they go. They've made, um, they've kind of made a nest between two leaves by folding one leaf over the top. And so it's that extraordinary. They've created their own shelter. Oh yeah, and it's an extraordinary piece of architecture. And the other day I walked past and there was just like one ant, a guard ant, and um, I love as the garden gets bigger, discovering all these different ways animals create their homes. Okay. It's beautiful. And oh, yeah. down here we've got... Well, everyone I know in Brisbane at the moment is having an explosion of spiders. I don't know what it is, it's, it's 19, 2017, the year of the spider. <laughs> and these are the beautiful tent spiders. Ah yes, they are amazing. They create marquees out of web. Upon a time I would have probably removed um, the spiders, especially when there's so many. Um, but I'm just going to go with this slightly wild, tangled, uh, messy garden for a while because um, one of the reasons I've got a garden is to have lots of insects and creatures living in it so just that's beautiful it's just um, finding a different way of seeing beauty rather than something that's sculptural and interesting visually but it's actually life so mm. yeah and here you've got your tanks oh uh, yeah we got um, tanks on both sides of the house so that was really useful when the garden was being established, particularly. Um, yeah, can't have too many tanks. <laughs> so um, these these acacias here. Yeah, they've um, grown up very quickly. They have, and there's two. There's the Brisbane wattle, Acacia fimbriata, and then this one's a zigzag wattle, which I think is more endemic to the tablelands, but it has that really lovely big fluffy yellow ball so yes. I just wanted the contrast in the leaves and um, and the different and this one flowers first and then the fingery are the second and so I've, also, I've gone for lots of um, banks here yep. and you know this one it's a bit shady so it's coming over here now because the wattles have grown so much but that's all right <laughs> bring out what to do And down low, I've got some hardenbergia and some scaviole. 
and some rocks and just lots of mulch and um, and what, a bird bath yeah bird bath and native raspberries native so raspberries. there's people and butterflies and birds um, and you've got another bird perch here yeah yeah well we've got these big eucalypts and occasionally small branches drop so I save them for the birds um, the birds need perches they like to sit on a perch and preen themselves after their bath so it's not a difficult job to create the sort of space that birds want oh absolutely not there's um parks are full of uh, fallen gum tree branches they're all over the place so normally normally we would put those in the rubbish yeah yeah or arborists mulch them um the arborist was um pruning some street trees one day and I asked him could I have a couple of logs um, and so he did and I talked to him about why I wanted them which was to drill holes for bees and it turned out he has a backyard full of native bees from all the bees that he rescues when he has to prune street trees yeah so he was totally sympathetic this is the path to the wild a bit um, we're lucky enough to have this beautiful, uh, I think it's a grey gum in the corner. And uh, there's a leopard tree from next door growing through it. But it's absolutely beautiful. And um, so I'm planting an understory of um, Banksia longifolius and uh, there's uh, a little wattle with a short fat leaf that lives around here and it's just cut self seeding and there's other sorts of wattles to get up lots of lamandras different sorts and uh, native hibiscus um, I've put finger limes there's at least three finger limes in here as well and this. they're very slow growing but they're getting there and uh, the other thing is I think it's native hop plant here it's got a really beautiful leaf. I mean I've, it's in my phone what it is. I got it from the gap oh, the road okay. nursery. Yep. Um, I've got a few of them around the place now but we've got this beautiful uh, leaf. You know one of the things I love about Australian natives is that whilst they're flowers because because they're not cultivars I have learned to appreciate their leaf leaves mm -hmm. and the different patterns and colors and now I'm in love with leaves <laughs> it's beautiful and so you don't have to have cultivars that flower so you know, it means you, you have you have uh, something attractive all year yeah yeah and if you it's made me start to think what I plant where as well to get the contrast in the leaf color and the shape and the size so I'm having fun um, just like I'm a beginner really <laughs> and um, I'm enjoy really enjoying I mean that's so pretty it is really pretty so this young fella came from the park across yeah, the road yeah, there was a big nest in the park so he's come over and he's taken up residency yeah. yes there's lots of mulch one thing we had too this year were lots and lots of stinkhorn fungi uh-huh three different sorts yeah i saw some yeah the remains of it there it was i mean they're really smelly but they were extraordinary we had a a basket one you know that yeah yeah, yeah. lattice sort of lattice red look like coral a, um the normal stink horns that are red topped and then a yellow topped one and the phallic one yeah yeah the two different sorts of phallic one red one yellow they were the three sorts and it's it's right where one of them was so there's something obviously very tasty there <laughs>